Things have been a mess for Juventus over the past few years. For a long time, they were the dominant team in Serie A, winning title after title during the 2010s. That dominance didn't translate into European success, although making two Champions League finals in 2015 and 2017 isn't anything to sneeze at. This desire by Juventus to finally win their first Champions League since 1996 led to a lot of financial risk-taking, in particular with the signings of Gonzalo Higuain and Cristiano Ronaldo. Did this gamble work? Uh, no, no, it did not at all. Juventus couldn't get past the quarterfinals during Ronaldo's time there, and Inter ended their domestic dynasty in 2021. The financial doping the club engaged in finally caught up with them, and now they're having to pick up the pieces from a much weaker position. Despite the chaos, Juve have accumulated an impressive young core of talent who could help usher in a new era. Fabio Miretti has already shown moments of brilliance for the first team, Luis Haza was named player of the tournament in the European Under-19 Championship, and Kini Nieldis is a versatile attacker with tons of potential. Another intriguing prospect is Matias Soleil, who's been a breakout star this season on loan. He's generating plenty of goals and fun highlights, which has gotten Juve fans very excited about his future. The purpose of this video will be to analyze the type of player he's shown to be, and how impactful his skill set has been. So dribbling is where I want to start off with, because it's a needed skill for high-end attackers. Star level forwards can create space and time for themselves off the dribble, especially in the final third where it's more congested. Getting past your marker high up the pitch is very valuable, especially in today's game where teams are more compact out of possession. At least on the surface, the data is on Soleil's side. According to FB Ref, among Serie A wingers and attacking midfielders, he's in the 99th percentile for successful take-ons per 90, carries into the final third, take-ons that lead to a shot for himself or others, and in the 71st percentile for carries into the box. Soleil's reflexes are impressive. If he thinks the defender is about to commit to him, he's effective at sidestepping past them into space. It's in these scenarios where he can consistently create breathing room to set up his next action. In that sense, he leans more to being a reactive dribbler than proactive. Near the penalty box, the threat of a shot will sometimes be blended into the dribble to fool opponents. Kind of like what we've seen from someone like Usman Dembele. We can look at this example here off of a throw-in. Soleil will make the interception and look to carry into the box. Wallace tries to close down the space, but his momentum allows Soleil to attack his right leg and get into prime real estate for what eventually becomes a pretty good scoring opportunity. You don't come away from watching Soleil and think he uses elite speed and strength to bypass defenders. Guys like him will use different maneuvers to gain an advantage. It could be letting the ball roll past him to generate that extra bit of momentum, changing the tempo of the dribble, or dummies and misdirections. In deeper areas, this is combined with constant scanning to make sure he's able to maneuver out of possible trouble. So far, it's worked for Soleil this season. Now we're on to passing and playmaking. Despite Frozenone not being an overly dominant possession side, Soleil ranks in the 85th percentile for live ball passes attempted, a sign of him having a heavy on-ball role. When you watch the film, it's easy to see how he racks up these numbers. Soleil is constantly trying to involve himself in the play, coming deeper within the right half space to create overloads, or presenting himself as a release valve on the flank. This might be the strongest part of Soleil's game. From a statistical standpoint, the numbers just pop off for him. Whether it be expected assists, progressive passes, key passes, passes into the box, you name it, he more than holds his own. What's impressive when watching the film is the waiting of the passes. It feels like more times than not, Soleil's teammates won't have to break stride as the receiver. And that's the case for between the lines passes in deeper areas, or trying to find runners into the box when breaking down the opposition. And the best creators in football tend to have this trait. Soleil also has a vast repertoire of passes, including through balls, reverse passes, and chips into the box. It's a minor thing in the grand scheme of things, but I think he can improve at his ability to switch to play. Compared to the other types of passes that he does, the waiting is more erratic in these situations. And there'll also be the odd moment or two where he holds onto the ball for too long. Overall though, 
It's easy to come away thinking Soleil is a clear net positive passer and creator in Serie A. Soleil's off-ball movement is interesting. We've made mention of his tendencies to drop deeper to help connect play, and that could involve him dragging his marker out of position for his teammate to exploit further up the pitch. He can also look for pockets of space to receive and then turn. If possession's on the other side, it's common to see him drift inwards instead of being a winger who's stretching the opposition. In terms of forward movement, Soleil isn't one to constantly hunt for spacing behind like other wingers or inside forwards. And this can be seen by him only being in the 49th percentile for touches in the penalty box, according to FBref. When out wide, he can use an in-out move to try and catch a defender off guard. If situated in the right half space, at times he'll look to make a straight run into space. If one was to look at Soleil's Shaw numbers, they look quite good. I think the small sample size is playing a noteworthy part though, as some of his best chances have tended to be from transition opportunities, broken plays, or him creating off the dribble. As well, him not being an elite north-south athlete might put a cap on the quantity of good chances he can generate for himself. So the video to this point has looked at some of the things which make Soleil a fun prospect. The logical next step is to try and figure out how good he's been. We could look at his goals and assist numbers, expected goal contributions, or how many shots he helps contribute to offensive actions. He ranks very good in these numbers, but we can go under the hood a bit more with what's called impact metrics. These all-in-one metrics are attempts at estimating a player's total value to their team. It's commonly seen in the NBA, but it slowly trickled into the football landscape. There's different versions of it. One that only incorporates the box score via on-ball actions, one that only takes into account plus minus and adjusts it for quality of teammates and opposition, and the hybrid approach which tries to marry the two together. What I said is a very broad description about the topic, so if you want to learn more, I'd highly suggest this video from the Thinking Basketball channel. To my knowledge, these are the four impact metrics which have been created to analyze individual value in football. I'll include links to explainers for each in the description. As you can see, Soleil holds his own in all of these metrics, especially in box score only ones, which give even more credence to the idea that he's been one of the standout performers in Serie A so far. With that said, we're talking less than 1500 minutes, which isn't a large sample size, and opponents will start the game plan harder against him as the season continues. But it's clear that this has been a great loan spell so far for everyone involved. I'm not big on player comparisons, but a decent one for Soleil might be Paulo Dybala. Dybala is an inside forward who's comfortable in initiating combinations during different phases of play, has high level touch, and has regularly outperformed expected goal models over the years. Although his peak was a couple levels below the very best in the sport, he's been a quality player for nearly a decade and would represent a good outcome for Soleil's career. There's been a bit of speculation that Premier League clubs are interested in signing Soleil, possibly in the January window. I'm not sure how well his skill set would translate to English football. The vision and overall passing would help in unlocking deeper blocks, and his decision making during transitions is quite good. But it's fair to wonder whether his dribbling style out wide would work in England like it has in Serie A. Perhaps you can move Soleil to a deeper position or play him as a number 10 to mitigate some athletic concerns, but there's less time and space between the lines in the Premier League these days. You'd be banking on his back to goal play, spatial awareness, and ability to turn away from pressure. Personally, I think he might be better off playing as a free 8 rather than a winger, but it's not a guarantee that it would work either. Pushing those translatability concerns to the side, there's still been a lot to like about Soleil's season so far. It'll be interesting to see how he progresses if he doesn't move abroad, and whether his production continues at this level. But for now, Matias Soleil has shown to be a very fun prospect in Serie A. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Here's a previous video I did on Brentford set pieces, if you want to see me get in the weeds for a niche topic. I hope you all have a good holiday season, and I'll see you when I see you.